These guys are both fucking gross <laughs> and retarded. Fuck, yes, I do. Mm. They're trying to claim that cold approach is only 2% of gay. You have no idea. Yeah, I guess I could say. He, he looks kind of like an angry beaver or something. Ah! The obstacle is the way. Yeah, groovy, bro. <laughs> What's up guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Happy Cyber Monday. We are running a 50% off sale through the end of the day today on my two products, Occam's Razor and Leads Machine. You can find the links in the description for that and you can read about everything that's entailed in those products on those pages. Occam's Razor is my full comprehensive game solution. Okay, without any assistance from me, that's in the eight week program. And Leads Machine takes my Tinder messaging and text messaging all the way to the top. So you can literally just copy those sequences and get way, way, way more dates. So they go very well together, both 50% off to the end of the day today. Sign me up. Okay, so in today's video, Rolo Tomasi is a guest on Michael Sartain's show on his podcast. They're trying to claim that cold approach is only 2% of gay. You have no idea. Which is absolutely retarded. So let's hear their thoughts about that and I'll give my response and let's jump right in. The way I'd like to explain it is if, uh, for those of you who watch soccer, or, you know, European football, the mm. inbound, right? The inbound mm. is a skill that you need, but it's not all of soccer. Cold approach is a skill that you need. Yes. Cold approach is taught as if it is game. Cold approach is 2% of, let me say it one more time. No, keep in mind, <laughs> it's like a fucking, angry <laughs> he has to be anti-cold approach because his whole thing his whole marketing angle is oh game is all social circle game is all status that's total bullshit we'll play the clip todd v dating after he was done with rsd he said social circle game is a stupid concept and it's just for marketing stupid 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 most guys don't even have a social circle you're not going to be getting laid a fuck ton like that okay it's easier in a place where michael sartain lives like las vegas and he's part of different organizations and shit like that but i've seen him a whole bunch of times and so have a lot of my friends standing around scared shitless in the club because he can't cold approach because he's a fucking pussy Gay. so he has to rely on this like fronting and all this shit okay he makes it a big deal to try to take pictures with girls goes to great lengths to, <laughs> to get these different events set up and all this stuff he thinks he's so cool making a statement like this wait let me say it again uh cold approach is only two percent of game boring we just ran a boot camp this past weekend in new york city and one of the guys, it was a Friday and Saturday night and then two day game sessions. One of the guys, he'd never done cold approach before. He pulled both nights. He's sending pictures in the group chat. He pulled and got laid, okay? But wait, I thought cold approach was only 2% of game. If you can walk up to a stranger, if you develop the skill set to walk up to a stranger anywhere in the world, okay, any city around the entire globe, and you have the skill set to be able to walk up to a stranger, both during the daytime or at night, Okay, forget online game. And be able to seduce that girl and get her to come home and bang you? Tell me more how that's only 2% of game. Okay, I'd love to hear from this stupid fuck. It's one of the most valuable skills you can have in the game. It's far more than 2% of the game. Yes, there's texting, there's running dates, there's closing dates, there's setting up your online profile, all that stuff. That's what we cover in our eight-week program, okay? But cold approach is a big component of that. In my eight-week program, I have online game optimization, as week one, night game is weeks two and three, day game is week four, texting and scheduling dates is week five, running your dates is week six, closing your dates is week seven, retaining the girls is week eight. So three weeks out of the eight, almost half is devoted to cold approach. But wait, I thought it was only 2% according to Mikey. Mike Sartain. Of course not. This guy's a dumbass. Okay, the very fact that he's collaborating with Rolo and a, and a whole bunch of other mega scammers says it all. Okay, looks like he hasn't slept in weeks either. To learn that full system, get on one of those free 30-minute calls, and we will go over with you how to master all these areas. But, like, again, makes zero sense when I have students all over the world routinely going out and picking up girls cold, something that this fucker can't even do, by the way. That hurt. Of course, he's going to demonize it. He has to say, oh, no, no, it's... 2% negative, negative percent. It doesn't even make any sense again, right? Like that's the whole fucking thing. You're meeting strangers and usually strangers are going to be in public. So you have to walk up and talk to them. Okay. It's a super, super important skill regardless. And listen to the arguments used. I already watched this clip because it's short. Listen to the shitty arguments he's about to use super, here. Yeah. Go ahead. If that. Send, send if the hate that. my way. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Send the hate my way. Cold approach. He looks like an angry little. <laughs> Can't say because it's you're not allowed to compare things. Like or You're not allowed to make. I guess I could say he, he looks kind of like an angry beaver or something. Ah! 
which is 2% of game. It is like, I'm really good at shooting free throws. Horrible comparison. It's not like shooting free throws at all. He sucks at it, so he has to minimize it. It's like the antithesis, because it's real game. Cold approach is real game, and that's not my opinion. Being able to walk up to a stranger in public and have the skills to be able to take them home, that is real game, regardless of him comparing it to basketball free throws, regardless of him saying it's 2%. That's all bullshit. Approach is 2% is of game. <laughs> he tried to make it 1% now. Oh, please. It, it's 0.1% of game. And social social circle. And then Rolo says, you, you missed it probably in the background, but Rolo says, if that, right? Because Rolo can't cold approach either. Rolo has a, a whopping total of 40 lifetime lays in his entire life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which I can get like even virgins and guys on dry spells doing in six months. What a fucking dumbass. This guy's always been, it's like the example of like someone fronting super hard. Watch my video on the end screen about Michael Sartain. It's like a guy that thinks he's super cool. He's like the cool guy on campus. I've ran into him multiple times in public. He's, he like can't even maintain eye contact. Contact. He looks like a scared little girl. Okay, and when he's in the club, you know, wait, waiting around to take a picture with a girl or something like that, he's such a fucking loser. Which includes social media is 98% of game. If we want to talk about being attractive as a man, the, my ability to break rapport, my ability to connect with the other people, my ability to lead a room, my ability to, to be charismatic. When he's talking about this break rapport, which is stupid, I mean, he used to teach that shit, but these different things he's talking about are things that you would do in a cold approach. Being charismatic, leading the room, that's in-person interaction. My ability to connect other people, my ability to take what I do and and uh, project it on social media mm -hmm. to be ostentatious or not. With lots of face app, he's extra good at that as well. Ostentatious or to project a certain image on social media, these are actually the ma major parts of game. When I talk- He has to project a fucking fake image because he's a huge pussy. About the three things that Pickup got wrong. Number one, the main thing was social media. They fucking completely missed the boat. Yes. Because I personally think this, I think a lot of Pickup coaches knew their clients were weird and did not want their clients on social media exposing their weirdness. It's but here's the other part, okay? I've been coaching this for over 10 years. The social media has been around that entire time. Most guys' Instagram profiles are not good enough. The vast, vast, vast majority. And I also prefer myself and other guys to take a minimalist approach. Back in the day, I'll tell a quick story. Back in the day when MySpace was around, I remember I added a girl on there. She saw that I had like different religious beliefs than her as one of the things in my profile. And she's like, oh, I don't think we should meet because you don't believe in the same religious stuff I do. I had another situation on Facebook where I was messaging a girl and then she saw my profile and she's like, well, I don't like this, this one quote you said or this one thing you said. And what I realized very quickly is when you expose them to extra information for no reason, when they have no compliance, they don't know who you are, they're gonna make assumptions and judgments about you that could negatively influence the possibility of them ever meeting up with you on a date. Like I said, I've talked to lots of hot girls about this. They'll screen out like 90% of guys based on their Instagram. Even guys that, that think they have a really good Instagram, usually it doesn't cut it. Unless it's like, I'll preface it like this. It, unless you have like a rock star profile that's been okayed by hot girls, you shouldn't be sending around your social media because it's going to work against you in lots of cases. And it doesn't mean you're a weirdo and that, that every person that needs help with dating is a weirdo as he's trying to frame it. Most people's just aren't good enough. Okay, they're not using pro pictures all the time. They haven't always been vetted by their girls. They haven't always had aesthetic upgrades applied to them and so on and so forth. And so when you send your Instagram or, or other things to these girls and they go in and stalk you and research you, they're like, oh, I don't like how many followers he has. I don't like how he looks in this picture. I don't like that he said this thing. I don't like that he's interested in this. And now you lost your date opportunity. So that's, it's not that pickup missed the boat. It just does not apply to most guys. He's literally like at the epicenter of like partying and networking and shit in Las Vegas where there's stuff going on 24 seven. Okay, most people are not in that scenario and his advice does not apply to most people. He's not like fucking destroying the game either. Like he's doing these like massive elaborate setups to get like photo opportunities and different shit like that. Who gives a fuck? I bang countless more hot girls than this guy. Oh, the second thing, uh, the second thing I think they got wrong was logistics. I do not want to teach you how to meet women from your mom's basement. I want to teach you to start a seven figure business so we leave your mom's basement. Get out there. And the third thing that- Logistics. <laughs> okay, now his second point <laughs> is you shouldn't be doing game living at home. Yeah, of course. Okay, you should try to have your own place and make your own living and stuff. Pickup doesn't say don't do that. I don't say don't do that. But some guys are inevitably in that situation because they're in college. Or some guys are inevitably in that situation because they're going through a divorce and they still live with their wife. But yes, everyone should better themselves. It's not, I don't tell anyone that they should be content living in their mom's basement. Was the female teammates. The teammates, having women introduce me to women, pre-selection. Like it was just, it's just, just one of these things where it's like, whenever I talk to pickup artists, they're like, let's remove the obstacle. The obstacle, that obstacle is the reason she's going to go home with you. The obstacle is the one who's got, the driving. The obstacle is the way, she's, right? She's yeah. driving. Hey, y'all come look at this.
The obstacle is the way. Yeah, groovy, bro. <laughs> Damn, Rolo is so fucking obnoxious. Fucking car. There's no <laughs> obstacle with me, bro. I'm mm -hmm. there all. There's no obstacle with me, bro. <laughs> it's hard to even listen to this dumb fuck for more than like two minutes. Now his next point, okay, is that he meets lots of girls through other girls. Okay, I lived with three girls in Brazil last year. We would all go out to the club together. We would bring other female friends of mine. Lots of times we had 10 girls at the table and then we would meet other girls in the club and we would pull groups together. Yeah, that's one thing you can possibly do. It's not the be all end all. Walking up, like when you're in a city and you're going out, okay, and you don't happen to be with a girl, you need the skills to be able to walk up to a stranger and be able to take her home. And if she can't that night, be able to set up a date for later so you can close her later. It's not the be all end all to just have some friends with girls. Okay, work on a business so you're not living in your mom's basement. What was the other fucking thing? And have social media. Go go have a hundred guys try that. Make a good good Instagram, get some female friends. It's not gonna do very much at all. This is just a lot of fucking hot air and like posturing and positioning. And he has to be like anti pickup and anti and whenever he like talks shit on pickup, he like demonizes guys that have like gotten in trouble or that are acting like jackasses. I don't like those guys either. Okay, but that's not representative of the whole space. Hey, most guys aren't even don't even have any fucking clue what real game entails. Yes, you do have to isolate them from the obstacles because lots of times the obstacles will block you and they don't want to talk to you. Okay, he's he's not very well versed in cold approach. So he's just like going into functions where a bunch of people know each other and all this stuff and, it, and it's, it's a different world. But again, that doesn't apply to most guys. That's what people aren't, aren't catching here. I'm sure people are, but he it's like this whole like fucking pipe dream that's not attainable for most guys. All gonna love me by the end of the night. That's the way I wanna be. And if we don't, if nothing happens between us, I still wanna know you. Dude, you know how many beautiful women I meet sometimes and they're like, I, I can tell they're not interested. That's fine. Do you wanna come on the podcast? You have 4 million mm -hmm. followers. Fuck yes, I'm gonna have you on the podcast. Chris, mm -hmm. this is- He always like looks to the side when he tries to make an emotional point. <laughs> I'm gonna say it again, bro, send the hate. Ugh. <laughs> this guy needs like a fucking karate chop right in the neck one of my favorite ones crystal hefner is hugh hefner's wife her and I oh, he's gonna go brag here i hosted a bikini competition back in the, like 2015 14 15 16 when we hosted the bikini competition she would be like we would text each other memes funny memes mm -hmm. and she'd be like hey michael do you want to come to the playboy mansion uh for midsummer night stream fuck you yeah. <laughs> fuck yes i do mm. fuck yes <laughs> But, but pickup artists would be like, why didn't you game her? Hugh Hefner's wife, motherfucker? Yeah. Hugh Hefner's Just wife? Yeah. No, pickup artists don't think they need to game every single person. I network a shitload as well. Again, like these points, what are these based on? Okay, he, he just wants to like straw man argue against pickup artists. Oh, pickup artists are all weird because look at this one guy that got in trouble. He just makes these sweeping generalistic statements. Imagine trying to demonize the skill of being able to walk up to any stranger anywhere <laughs> on the planet whenever you're doing anything and be able to take her home. Okay, that's a pretty fucking big deal. And that's what you're doing in real life when you're walking around and stuff. If you cut out online game, cold approach is all that's left, okay? Like, for, fuck all this, oh, I'm just gonna make a good instant Instagram and make a few female friends and anyone that rejects me, I'm I'm gonna still be their friend and maybe have them on the podcast. Like, get the fuck out of here. Bro, <laughs> whatever you, Crystal, whatever you, I love Crystal. Shout out to Crystal Hefner if she's here. Those are beautiful, wonderful. <laughs> Shout out to Crystal Hefner if she's here. <laughs> Full charitable woman. If fucking this guy's a good example of humble bragging. Okay, he's trying to just fucking flex and be the cool guy and stuff. Like I said, okay, to learn real fucking game, which is not this at all. And he's collaborating with the, one of the biggest scammers in the whole space right now, Rolo Tomasi, on this show. Get on a free 30 minute call. We will get you extremely good and have your schedule packed full of dates in two to three weeks. You don't have to sit there with your little Instagram waiting for a girl to come along, which won't happen. Incredible woman. And she would invite me to the Playboy Mansion. Of course, I'm going to be fucking friends with her, bro. Of course, this woman. Of course, bro. I'm in his high status. Do you know, I have a friend of mine, Toy Hardy. Shout out to Toy. Her birthday's on Oh, here we go. Sunday. This woman is in. Hey, I got another friend. Shout out to her. Is she here, by the way? Uh, listen, bro. Introduce me to so many billionaires. Billionaires, bro. Of course. Now he's going to brag about knowing billionaires. Cool. I do, too. They're clients. But Michael Sartain is the coolest. This, this, this ability to connect. But we treat women like they're the enemy. And I don't. I love mm. them, man. I love being no, no, in a hot no, no, tub no, no, with 12 no. women at the same time. Women make life beautiful. Women get, make life worth living. I get that constantly. And, yeah. and, and of course, Andrew does, too. Yeah. He, made, he made a big... I'm gonna talk about Andrew Tate. Yeah, a lot of this. Everybody thinks Andrew is like this misogynistic, you know, fuckwit, right? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, you. He would not be doing what he was doing. Yeah, he is. He's caught on camera doing it. He's caught on camera fucking intimidating and threatening violence on girls. Of course, he's gonna stick up for another fucking shithead in the space. Okay, they all fucking unite together. He was truly a misogynist. He was truly hate women. Yeah. Men who truly hate women aren't online. 
Yeah. Men who truly hate women aren't going, oh man, she fucked me over. Like, because they care, of their outcome dependent yeah. on what that, on that rejection, yeah. right? And so I, I, I've been doing this for about 20 years. I Men that hate women don't care about a rejection. <laughs> and if you care about a rejection, you're outcome dependent. These are just all wrong statements everywhere here. I've met a handful of guys who I would say are genuine misogynists. But the reason why we keep saying like, oh, those guys are incels, those guys are uh, misogynists, because it's the easiest 20th century definition mm. that we can give to a guy who women wouldn't want to fuck. No, Andrew Tate was called a misogynist for like being misogynistic in endless amounts of video clips and posts. Okay, let's be clear. And so when I get called a misogynist, it's usually because I'm connecting dots or I'm asking. Oh, here we go. If you haven't already, watch my series on debunking the red pill and Rolo Tomasi. All this connecting dots shit is just pseudoscience. Like have people buy into his nonsense without questioning it comfortable questions and there's a book by a guy named boaz called the irrational male you can find on amazon where he debunks all of rollo's major talking points which is hilarious and they think they don't have any counter argument to those things so the next thing out of their mouths is who hurt you right right or what was your growing up like or then you want to turn into you know armchair psychologist at that point and to reframe the, the you know the debate at that point because they don't have a comeback to the data or the connections or the correlations that i'm making from the data and then it's like well, only an incel would have that question. Only a, um, uh, a misogynist would try. Only a 40 lay count old dumb fuck who said he had four lifetime booty calls across his entire lifetime would go on a bunch of shows and would pretend to be an expert on this stuff and make up a bunch of false statistics and invent terms and connect the dots like a total fucking moron. Okay, only that kind of fucking dumbass. Without the internet and all this shit, Rolo would be no one. Okay, he can go and pretend on everyone's shows, but the Boaz guy, like, has his number. He fucking disproved every single thing Rolo said. Connect the dots that you're connecting right now, and it's like, no, the data is what the data is. Yeah. What do you think about that? And when it conflicts with their belief sets and it conflicts with their convictions, that's when you get... There's no other recourse but to turn you into an incel. By the way, there's no such thing as an incel, an involuntary celibate. Yeah. In 2022, if you want to get laid, you can get laid. For sure. Come to this state. Come to, <laughs> come to fly go into to, Reno. Go to the Buddy Ranch. Fly into Reno. I'll take you to Mount House. That's bullshit, too. 27% of guys, which is more than one in four, have not had sex in the last year. That's not the case that everyone get laid. I even had a six foot five jacked tattooed guy that literally tall. In great shape was it came to me as a virgin okay he was getting a little bit extra attention up front in interactions but had no idea how to lead them forward no idea how to text etc nevada i you you give me uh let's see uh finder fucking gross certain so i'll get uh, 700 bucks i'll take 200 and i will get you laid you want to have a threesome no problem i will teach you <laughs> brothel game in now rollo's offering to buy people escorts pay rollo he takes a cut and then he buys an escort for you. Nice. Now we see why you guys think cold approach is 2% of the game because you're both a couple fuckheads. Reno, Nevada, you 100% Bro. you know, user satisfaction guarantee. Okay. <laughs> That's how Rolo does it. All right, enough of that. These guys are both fucking gross <laughs> and retarded. Emotional damage. Make sure you take advantage of the 50% off Black Friday special. The link's in the description. If you want to learn the whole system and have 64 hours of coaching, from me and the guys on my team. You can sign up for a free 30 minute call. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Watch the video on Sartain collaborating with all the biggest scammers in the end screen. Please like the video and subscribe and I'll see you guys on a video soon. Take care. Take a look at the scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor. I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.